What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Beyond the DJ Booth. <laughs> We're still here. Still here. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Dude, I'm this on dude, fumes. I'm on, uh, this I'm man fumes. came in hot from Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> I, but, we don't have a sponsor, so I won't show the brand, but uh, this is caffeine right energy here. Energy drink bottle. central. Dude, it's not brutal. even... It's not even one o'clock, bro. I know it was late night and early morning. Let's let's talk so. about it. Let's hear about it. What 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 what's going on? So, this was in Charlotte. Yeah. No big deal. It's right. two and a half hour drive. Allegedly, allegedly, you know. But I've lived in predominantly like okay. One thing I've I just have to say it up front. Like election season sucks, right? Like just especially in a purple state when everybody's visiting here. Let's hold on. Before we say anything further, we're not going into politics. No, 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 no. That was like my rule with <laughs> yeah, Mike yeah, Walter. Yeah. I'm like, I don't give a shit who you like. <laughs> no, I'm I don't like, care I'm who you like. I don't. Yeah. I'm not going to say who I like and don't like. We're not doing politics no. on this particular podcast. No. Okay. But let's just say in general, during an election year, it's a shit show. Economically, uh, everything. Right. Your issue with it so was a candidate. Okay, a candidate came into town. Oh no, and. <laughs> basically shut down the entire highway. Wow. And the thing is, you don't know when it's going to be done. I'm sitting there, third car in line. Cops are in front of me, and I'm like, how do I get out of this mess? Like, I got to get to a gig. Yeah. You know? But you left mad early, to be I fair. I did, but right. I mean, I but still... But did you know this candidate was coming to town? No, I had no idea. I think oh. you... Uh, and it wasn't you. Somebody else told me, yeah. just mentioned it to me. So, literally, I... You knew this before you left Raleigh, North Carolina, no. or on the way there? On the, I knew when I was sitting there, I'm like, something must oh, be going on. There's no car accident. Wow. And the whole thing both ways was was clear. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, something's up. Yeah. Like, and so I'm checking the news, oh, like, what's going man. on? So uh anyway, I I don't know my way around Charlotte. You no. know, so I'm you like don't. trying to reroute. Yeah. And it's taking me up another freeway, but that's blocked off. So then I go onto Google Maps and I'm like, hey, uh, avoid highways. Yeah. So then it takes everybody down some podunk town. Basically, one lane. I'll show you the photo. Like, look at this photo. This Dude, is like literally what I took. I had nothing else to do. Whoa. Look at this. I mean, this was like an extra two hour detour that I was not expecting. It took you four and a half hours to get to Charlotte? Four ish. Wow. Four ish. Wow. Because this is what was going on. Like, literally, everybody's trying to get around. But then. Was the candidate at your hotel that you were no, playing at? I don't think oh, okay. so. I don't know because you did get full on like cavity search. I think that's new, <laughs> pretty much. So you know, I've played at many hotels. Yeah, and this was, hey, we need to uh, have you go down a certain entrance. Yes, I've been Se to this place. I know where you're talking about. Security guard comes out and he goes, "Hey, we need you to get out of your car." I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "We well, have to search it." I'm like, "And I got one of your CO2 cannons." I'm like, "This is gonna go real well." <laughs> Right, and it's, they and they share it with a bank. So yeah, I think that yeah. maybe has something yeah. to do with it. I don't right, know. Right, right. So the guy comes out with a wand, and he's yeah, like, he's got the going. mirror that he holds up underneath, and all that stuff. He did me, he did me like that <laughs> three, four, five years ago too. Oh my! With no presidential candidate in town. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, sh shout out to Whippa. They crushed it. North Carolina was Whippa. I was, you know. I go to all the engages, so yeah. for me to be impressed takes yeah. a bit, and this committee did a great job. Really? I was proud to be a part of this association. That's awesome. That being said, yes. so I was playing the after party. Yes. They had a band playing before me. Um, the band was actually solid players. Solid players. Okay. However, the playlist. Let's talk mm -hmm. about this for a hot second. The <laughs> most cliche five songs. Well, hold on. Before <laughs> you say that, WIPA is comprised of... North Carolina wedding professionals. Right. And what would you say the demographic was? I would say it was probably heavy female, heavy female. 25 to 40. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Okay. There was a few gray hairs. All right. I wanted I wanted to hear that before I hear the first five songs from the band. So pretty cliche. Okay. We got the funk. They started. Was the opener? Out. Opener. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> these two are going to be, you're going to know these. Brick House. Wow, your favorite. Go on. And uh, your favorite, play that funky music. Uh, go on. <laughs> I Will Survive, number four. So they've yet to make it out of 1975 <laughs> yet. Or Then you talk about a left turn. They bring out, so this was an urban band. Apparently there is one country singer. <laughs> Hold on a second. Can we address something? <laughs> Saquon, I know you don't have a mic. <laughs> I thought you couldn't say urban anymore. 
Oh, is that out? I don't I know. I mean, you're not going to get canceled over it, but it's. <laughs> I, I yeah, I was. I, I don't. I somebody gave me that memo a year or so ago. Okay. <laughs> So what's the, what's the what? I don't know. We're asking Stay with Saquon. Me, people. Stay we're, with we're, me. we're 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 asking Saquon like he speaks for the whole community. We want to keep it at that. Yeah. Okay. He's okay. Yeah. With yeah. It. Yeah. He's speaking for the community. We're gonna leave it at that. Go ahead. So then, <laughs> I don't know what they had a guest singer, a country guy, who came out and took a left turn and went to Wagon Wheel six fifth or sixth song in. Then went to Friends in Low Places, number six or seven in right. the set. I'm like, what is happening right now? And they were playing them okay. It wasn't that. It was right. just like an yeah. odd. I saw the video you sent me. Yeah. But like. It was just an odd. The the playlist is a mess. I mean, I, so but were people into it? Uh, I think at Excuse first me. they were because they were kind of dinner was delayed. So yeah. they were supposed to play from eight to ten. Okay. They didn't go on till 920. So they had a 40 minute set. Right. They stopped right at 10. And because they, I don't know, they may have pre-programmed what they were yeah. going to play, so they didn't right. shift at all, knowing right. that they were an hour late. and 20 minutes yeah. late. So when I went on, I'm like, oh, this is going to be I'm great. I'm going to smoke these This, this is going right. to be great. You know, so the after party ended up being like a, a different set than I was originally going into it with, because I was thinking they were going to play all the hits. Yeah. And I was going to go more deep cuts. Yeah. No. So I had to play more of an open format set, and uh, it was great until, until the end. Right. When I was told 10 to 12. Yeah. And again, I think it was miscommunication, not with yeah. the, the committee, but the actual venue. Yeah. Because again, it's with the bank. Yeah. So at about 1140, lights go full on, like ugly lights in a club. I'm like, am I done? Do I keep playing? Like, what's happening? And it, it just, just killed the whole vibe. Shifted the whole energy. And mm. I played for another, I don't know, 10, 15, but it was just not. No that good. Part of it. No but bueno. the, the party itself was great. Like once once I started playing and it, yeah. was, it was fun and uh, all over the map, it was great. It was a good good gig. So, dude, your boy's going into a triple header. You know I don't do those anymore. What tonight? Are you yeah. starting tonight? Yeah. Okay. Tonight, so Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All weddings? No, thank God. Uh, tonight, <laughs> uh, like an opening of a building. Okay. R- rooftop vibe setter. No right. dancing probably. Yeah. Tomorrow night rehearsal dinner, which I rarely do. Like, are they going to dance, or is this just vibey music? I think early vibe, and then they're going to move outside, which I'm like, there's a hurricane coming. I don't know how <laughs> how violent yeah. it's going to be, yeah. but it doesn't sound no. very great. And then uh, maybe I can get them to dance. She sent me a, a good dance list. Okay. Oh, uh, you're not playing the wedding as a company playing the wedding? No, I don't think so. Wow. I think they have a band. Okay. I think they have a band. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, and then Saturday wedding. Okay. Yeah. So three totally different kind of things. Also this week, you had a birthday. I did, bro. Right? I did. Yesterday. Yesterday. Or yesterday, as of when we're recording this. Yeah. Yeah. Should we say that? Do you think we need to tell people we pre-record these things? Like, what if something catastrophic ha- That's happens? That's true. Maybe you know we what should. I mean? Anyway, this is pre-recorded. So what, what did we you We want to batch content for these people, right? Right. We want, to, we want you guys to have a new episode every week. Right. Anyway, go so ahead. So what did you do for your birthday? Or are you still having I, I, weekend plans? It's on I, a weekday. I feel like I feel like it was yeah, it was on a it was on a Wednesday. Pretty non eventful. Went to the spa, <laughs> hit a little massage. Okay. A little two PM massage. <laughs> then but otherwise I was right right here. What type of massage though? Um no non happy ending, <laughs> just a standard <laughs> Swedish back, lower back and shoulders. Swedish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> and then but I was here all day and I was redoing the bulbs i yeah. didn't like the way they were hanging and i put together that <laughs> desk over there for saquon and is that what you do at 53 or 53? i don't know <laughs> i just i was like i was like i don't know what we're supposed to do today like you yeah. know and ashley's got to work and she got a like super important job and i just did i felt like yeah awkward just what am i what do you want me to ride around in my car and listen <laughs> to music all day it just it felt more comfortable just to come here take a little yeah. break hit the spa and then yeah. we went to that that la terraza place last okay night, oh you did you like yeah. What'd you think? Solid. The food's good, too. The food was really good, but the vibe... Did you sit outside? Uh, no, it was too hot. It was in summer. This was, like, the perfect night to sit outside. Yeah. They sat me inside, and I just kept looking outside jealous. Yeah. And I was like, we got to get out there. Yeah. And she went the and talked to the hostess. Massive. Yeah. She was talking to the hostess, and she was like, of course. And we went and sat outside. That's awesome. Awesome food. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, um, do you think that's going to be an event space? It was an event space. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay. It was an event space. They had all kinds of stuff up there. Yoga. I'm sure people yeah. got married up there. And then that guy Samad, who owns some other restaurants around here, he opened it up as a restaurant. I think it would kill. 
as an I, event space. I, mean, I don't know that it did well, but it could have been mismanaged. It could have yeah. been owned by the building. It could have been owned by the yeah. city. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have any speculation on All that. Right. Anyway, cool. it was pretty uneventful birthday, but it's not a milestone number. Right. You know, you're right. looking at 53. Like, it's not. Yeah. Is 55 considered a milestone? I mean, I think it's fives and tens. Oh. Right? I mean, that's like on the half. Let's All do right. something good. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Anyway. Well, you want to jump into a question? Sure. Let's do uh, it. I found this one online. Yeah. I didn't get permission. What do you mean by that when you say that? Well, just in the DJ groups. Okay. Okay. I reframed the question because I didn't have permission to share it. I got so, you. But I think I get the tenor of. Right. So we're not going to say saying. shout out so-and-so exactly. from like Cleveland. Or yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, with the questions, man, we always want to give a little value to listening to the podcast instead of me and you just chit-chatting about right. whatever happened in our lives. And I feel like this is something that's come up in multiple forums and even on our mentoring calls. I think we've had somebody allude to this before. Yeah. yeah. And I'm curious if you've run into it. So let Read me... it. Doing a wedding and the planner is insisting that every single bit of communication goes through them. This started with contracting, me making it out to the client, but she sent it to the client to have it signed. And has continued since. If that wasn't bad enough, she isn't great at communicating herself. Sometimes mm. one or two weeks before getting an answer from her. Ooh. How would you handle this? I have a feeling a shoe is going to drop at the wedding that I'm not aware of. And I'm overly stressed about it. Have you Man, ever run into this? Not to this degree, no. Okay. Have you? I feel like you have. Yeah. Why don't you talk on it and let me kind of just chime in on what, what I would do. Go on. Well, if it happens now, yeah. it's usually like... It ain't going to happen again because I'm not going to work with that person more than likely. Now, Great I will point. say that because I feel like I've got enough referral leads in the pipeline that one planner isn't going to define me. If you're new in the business, you can't do that. Right. You know, you're going to get a reputation be for being hard to work with. Right, right. The other thing I think that's great, because uh, we have a planner currently who's kind of changed her philosophy and operates like this. Sure. And I can't work that way. I have to have direct communication with them. But there are people on my team, this is why a multi-op can be advantageous for you. Yeah. And my guys are like, I don't mind. I'll do it. So great. It won't be me ever working with this planner, but we got other people who don't mind that kind of pressure or stress okay. and can kind of work with that limitation. To me, I feel like every gig you have risk out there and it's about how much risk you're willing to have out there to deal with something like this. For me, if I was dealing with a, a high-end planner, I would not want to risk my work being out there and fumble it because I didn't have communication to know, especially if it was like an ethnic wedding and I didn't have the right music, no Wi-Fi. Like, it could go terribly for me, and I just make the wedding bomb because I didn't have any of the intel because I never had any direct communication. Right. So for me, I'm not willing to take that risk. Other people, it may not be a big of, as big of a deal. Okay, well, what if it what if it did happen? Like, what if this is happening live? Like, you know, and then somebody's just trying to take over. I would defer. What you mean? You'd get out of it? No, I mean, I would. If the planner is saying, "Hey, I want everything to go yeah. through me." Yeah. Okay. What am I going to do? Am I right? <laughs> am I going right. to go behind her and then try to reach out to these people? Right. No, I would just play nice in the sandbox on this one, and then know that hey, this this kind of planning mindset isn't for me. What if it's like the the listener or the person you hijacked the question from? What if it's in the you know in this planning process or in these final weeks leading up to the wedding and you can't yeah. get an answer from her? Ugh. Are you willing to circumvent the planner then and go to the client and hold on two part question <laughs> and um, also be like, yo, you know, Carol is not responding to me like. I need to know what your first answer is, or I need to know if you want me to shorten it, or I need to know uh, how to pronounce the last name, you know, Kersputnik or whatever. I would personally take the risk and show up and uh, hope that the planner gets me this intel. <sighs> Man. I don't think I'd go behind her back. I just feel like that's going to lead to problems. Yeah, I don't. I, I think I'm different on that. On you that, would, if, you would reach out. I think I would definitely reach out to the client. And just say, hey, I'm just having some trouble getting up with the planner. Like there are some holes in this this uh, yeah. timeline that I need filled in order to do a good right. job. And and you know if if that takes him getting thrown under the bus or not referring me again, I probably like you said, don't want to work with him again anyway. Yeah. I mean, we are very lucky here, man. There there are yeah. uh, really good planners in the city of Raleigh. Um, most of them know exactly what they're doing. 
We've worked with them. They've put together a great timeline. I'll ask during the plan, you know, during the process, once I get that timeline, which is usually two to three weeks before right. the wedding, do you want me to direct questions through you as in the wedding planner or the couple? Yeah. And, you know, nine times out of 10 say, just send me the questions and I'll get up with, you know, the bride and groom or the groom and the groom or whatever. And I'll make sure that you have everything you need. Yeah. And I may have 20 to 25 questions. Right. Everything from, you know, do I need to shorten these dances to where's the cocktail hour taking place if I've never been there or where's the ceremony taking place? Like I might have 25, 30 questions going right. into this event. And and I very rarely, knock on wood, have somebody not send me that information right. in plenty of time. So mm -hmm. I always think that when I get something like this, like yeah. how did they get here? Yeah. It's got to be one of two things. Yeah. Either DJ burned them at one point. Yes. Or a planner doesn't know how to sell themselves is like trying to create more value to be the person taking on the stress for the client. It's, th it's those are those the two. only two options. Right. Because yeah. why would you want to create more work for yourself when you don't need to? Right. It's normally the they've been burned by a DJ. So with that, yes, I always try to circumvent that by saying, hey, if you let me have this conversation, I have no problem with you being on the call. Yeah. Like, right. Join the call. It actually Smart. sometimes helps because they Smart. then trust me then going forward. Yes. Because then they know I'm not some, you know. Some Yahoo yeah. and you're and you're sitting there on the call and they're like, this guy's pro. Right. Right. And what I've also found is it allows me to talk up the planner. Sure. With her being Same. on the call. Same. You know what I mean? I've done numerous like first initial calls with the planner on with the with their yeah. couple. And I'm just like, listen, don't worry about doing this, you know, planning form for me because you've hired a professional yes. planner. I'm gonna get the PDF and the planner's just like, you know, you're yeah. cheering them on. Right. You get off the call and the planner texts you and it's just like, Yeah, thank you for hyping me up. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Good question. Even though you hijacked <laughs> it and wasn't sent in. But it is a great question. I think people, you know, are going to run into this at some point in their career. It happens. Uh, not all the time. Yeah. But thankfully. Yeah. But good to know how to deal with it. Good one. You want right. to wrap this one? Let's do it. Good stuff, guys. So thank you all for listening. Please, now that we're, what, five, four or five episodes into it, leave us a review if you can, wherever you're listening to your podcast. We'd appreciate that. And uh, hopefully it'll push us out to even more people. So thank you all for listening. Back next week. See ya.